Make ready, men. Our eastern foes are not used to proper battles, and it would be rude to keep them waiting. They seem strangely eager to reach their benighted and wicked afterlife. So let's oblige them. To arms! During the Second Punic War, a battle known as Beneventum took place nearby modern-day Benevento in 214 BC. Livy provides a brief account of the conflict, which was a component of the Roman effort to subjugate the southern Italian city-states that had sided with Hannibal following the Battle of Cannae. Hannibal was waiting for his subordinate Hanno to send his 1200 Numidian cavalry and 17,000 Grudians and Lucanians up the Via Appia from Brutium as he prepared to attack the city of Nola. In the past, Hanno had been instructed to travel Campania in order to incite the southern cities of Magna Graecia to revolt against Rome and to gather new recruits. In order to strengthen himself, Hannibal explicitly instructed his lieutenant to march to Campania through Beneventum. However, Hanno had other options he might have pursued. A praetor named Gracchus had been commanded by the consul Fabius to march from Lucertia, where he had been wintering, to Beneventum. After failing to capture Hannibal in Campania in 215 BC, Fabius sent Gracchus to Beneventum with the intention of doing so this time. He may have have had the intention of blocking the arrival of reinforcements. But there is no proof that Fabius was aware that reinforcements were coming. While Gracchus and Hanno arrived in the city at around the same time, Gracchus ultimately gained control of it because a Roman force was stationed there. He set up camp alongside Hanno's route about a mile outside of the city. About three miles from the city, Hanno set up camp. The Senate gave Gracchus permission at this point to promise the two legions of slaves that if the fight was won and they brought him an enemy's head, they would be liberated. The troops did not align in combat order until the next day. The two sides set up their separate armies in a manner that was customary for the time. Hanno deployed half of his cavalry and his right flank on the Kala River. His troops was positioned in his middle next to them. The other half of Hanno's cavalry was on their left, flying in the air, so to speak since they were unprotected by any topographical obstacle. The Carthaginian line was shorter than the Roman line. With the exception of the Roman cavalry being deployed on the left, the Roman left was similarly arranged. The legions were positioned to the right of the Roman cavalry. However, it is not specified if there were any Allied legions present in this conflict. Furthermore, it is unclear where the proper Roman legions and the slave man legions were stationed. The preponderance of the Roman cavalry was deployed to the right of the infantry. The fight that followed was a brutal grind. The Romans almost failed because of Gracchus' statement. Because the slaves were hindering them by dragging the severed heads around the battlefield as well as pausing to decapitate the dead. Realizing what was going on, 
he proclaimed that until the enemy was totally vanquished, no one would be set free. During this time, Gracchus gave the command for his cavalry to assault Hanno's flanks, where the Numidian cavalry was posted. The flank battle was uncertain for a while as a result of the Numidian cavalry's excellent resistance against this cavalry onslaught. However, Gracchus once more warned the rank and file that they would lose their freedom if the enemy was not swiftly routed out of the way. Due to this inspiration, the slave legions launched one more desperate charge and drove the Carthaginian army back to their camp, where the legionaries quickly followed. The Carthaginians entered the camp and discovered that some of their Roman prisoners had armed themselves. The Carthaginian reinforcements were completely besieged and defeated. Less than 2,000 of Hanno's soldiers, including Hanno, survived the attack that followed, which resulted in the complete annihilation of his army and the surrender of his camp. In the conflict, 2,000 Romans also perished. Although Gracchus declared his troops' liberties as a result of his triumph, he was unhappy with around 4,000 of them. For the remainder of their time serving in the legions, he issued an order that they have their evening meal while standing rather than sitting. This act was intended to degrade them for what was thought to have been a lack of bravery throughout the conflict. After the fight, Gracchus moved into Lucania to stop Hanno from organizing another army here and using it to support Hanno. Because of his success outside of Benevento, Gracchus was finally able to force Hanno into Brutium. Hannibal was forced to accept that he would be unable to lead a victorious war in Campania after being denied the chance to get much-needed troops.